Hi everyone and a very warm welcome to this first lecture on place, memory and meaning. Um, I hope everyone's doing well today. Um, this inaugural lecture is to help us explore some key concepts that are related to how we construct um, place. And to do this, we're going to explore home as place and housing as space. So we've got quite a, quite a nice, uh, easy introduction to the module using concepts that we all know, we've all experienced, we will all have an interpretation of. So let me just explain what I'll be covering during the course of uh, the next 10 to 15 minutes. So we'll be covering three things. Um, the first thing is to explain a little bit more about what I hope place memory meaning will help you to achieve at the end of the academic year. So teaching on place memory meaning normally finishes just before Easter time. So um, uh, whilst that may seem to be a long way off, um, take my word for it, the time will pass very, very quickly. So, um, and I really hope we have an enjoyable um, number of months ahead of us. Um, so I'll just explain a little bit more about the module and what we hope you will have um, achieved at the end of the academic year. And then I want to draw on home as a concept that we would associate with place. And by place, generally we mean somewhere that is subject to interpretation, somewhere where the meanings we assign to are um, um, subjective, um, somewhere that is likely to change over time. So um, unlike space, which is more quantitatively expressed in the literature, um, place tends to be something which calls upon our very unique experiences of um, somewhere where we may see, we may go to, it may be imagined. Um, so there's lots of different um, examples of this that we'll be covering during the course of the module. But one of the really, um, I think, compelling examples is um, home as place. Um, home is somewhere that we all know. Um, we've probably lived in different places over time. We can compare and contrast experiences. And very few places have those quintessential characteristics of um, the uniqueness of place than, than home. Um, so it seems a very logical starting point for us all to begin to reflect upon and to begin to get some sense of our individual experiences, but also our collective experiences. Um, earlier on in the summer, um, around about July, um, July the 14th, in fact, um, I posted a welcome film to welcome you to the module. And at that point, Lester was in um, a lockdown situation and I happened to live within what is currently around 200 yards from the quite arbitrary boundary that was that was drawn to um, serve as a demarcation of um, a COVID-19 um, uh, red alert area. Um, but I think one of the things that um, that experience has given us and COVID generally is the opportunity to think about whether home as we have experienced it, how we conceive it, has changed um, since the um, coronavirus began to grip. So I'll be asking you to bring to the seminar which accompanies this lecture some of your reflections on how home for you has actually felt, the realities of, of being somewhere with your family or with your friends, whether that's felt in any way different, whether your experiences have been the same, has there been anything that's been more intensified, anything that's been more consolidated? What adaptations have you had to make um, under COVID-19? So I think that'd be a really interesting and contemporary starting point for us. Um, and the third thing that I'll be covering is housing as a concept associated with space. So um, in that sense, housing as an entity, the kind of physicalities of bricks and mortar about where we live, is something which is often characterized in the literature, uh, more empirically speaking, more quantitatively driven, perhaps even more scientific or pseudo-scientifically pseudo driven. Um, and that's really as a kind of opening um, stage for us to explore these relationships between housing and home. And of course, there are interrelationships between the two concepts of housing and home, as we'll see 
um, during the course of the time ahead. So without further ado, place memory and meaning. Um, the module enables you to gain, I really hope, an understanding and, and extensive knowledge on conceptualizations of place. Now, primarily our discipline is obviously geography. So it'll be the body of work from geography scholarship that we'll be drawing upon during the course of this module. But also, and I think this is a really welcome addition to our um, body of scholarship that lies ahead, we'll be drawing on, um, on other disciplines. Um, no discipline sits in a vacuum and certainly a subject like place, memory and meaning is something which is truly interdisciplinary in nature. So we'll be looking at geography, primarily, but also we'll be looking at um, architecture, we'll also be looking at sociology, um, urban sociology, we'll be looking a little bit at philosophy, we'll be looking even a little bit at archaeology, we'll be looking at history. So there's a wide range of disciplines that, that shape the way that we conceive place. Sometimes we're aware of what these um, kind of forces are, but sometimes we're not. And the, um, the, the kind of archaeological dimension is to enable us to um, not just to dig physically to see what lies underneath the um, land that we do see, but to dig deep from a knowledge point of view to find out what we can really unearth from our minds. Um, and the second objective of the module, and this is a, a really, actually a really, a really different um, characteristic that this module has, I think, relative to other modules, is that it gives you the opportunity to be really creative when it comes to the assessment. So um, we'll talk a little bit more about what the assessments are during the course of the weeks ahead, but um, the first assessment is a literature review of place with an emphasis on a particular place type. It could be a sporting stadium, it could be a landscape, it could be imagined, it could be a literary, it could be a musical, a virtual, you know, there's all different kinds of ways that we can, can conceive that. And the final assessment itself is your personal journey of that place, um, where you, you put yourself as a, as a protagonist in your own story um, and you experience um, um, candidly and you recount candidly how it feels to be you going through that particular journey of place. And we've had some brilliant ex examples of this um, over the years and it'll all make a bit more sense as we get into the module. But one of the things that I would say is begin to think initially about places that are special to you. Where is it that you felt um, particularly special that is particularly compelling for for you. So it's a really great chance to, to, to kind of, well, you know, self-indulge in a way and to use this module as a vehicle of exploring somewhere that is special to you. And of course, linking this with this fantastic body of literature that exists on, on place. So that's just a little, a little tiny bit about, you know, the, um, the nature of the module. And there is much, much more that we do, including, I'm hoping, um, live performances probably probably over Zoom with some musicians who have joined us over the years and some live readings, which I will be asking you to do as well. So I'm just going to plant that seed, it's slightly cryptic, but um, we'll come back to that. So, you know, but just kind of hopefully, you know, this will be a, a really enjoyable, engaging and informative experience for you. So beginning with part one, what is home? <laughs> That's the question. What do we mean by home? Well, what is certainly the case is that a home is much more than just a roof over one's head. It has physical, emotional, psychological, political, cultural and economic dimensions. Where we live is a form of our self-identity. If we have a home, we have the right to vote. We have the right to a doctor. We have somewhere where we can store our personal belongings. We have somewhere where we can welcoming our friends. We also, equally importantly, can exclude people. Um, so um, a home itself is certainly much more than just that physical entity of bricks and mortar. It also means a wide range of other characteristics too. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, I would really like you to bring in your notes to our seminar that explores the, the particular ways that home for you felt different under COVID-19. Um, 
This module place memory meaning has the word memory in it for a, a reason. The human memory is a phenomenal thing, um, but it's also valuable. So unless we document certain things, the risk is that we lose them or even worse, possibly that someone appropriates them from us and morphs them into something that they themselves want to be. And we've seen that over history and, uh, you know, over, you know, aspects of you know, globalization and so on over the centuries. So, um, so bring in some, some notes, they could be written notes, they could be photos, they could be audio recordings, anything of that sort to, so as we can explore this as a group. And I think that would be really, really interesting. Um, so what has home meant for you during COVID-19? In what way has it been different? It may not have been different, but it might have been different. Um, do you think, in addition to your sort of domestic realm, home, do you think that COVID-19 has altered the way that we experience urban and rural landscapes at all? I mean, thinking of the different safeguards that have to be built in um, to accommodate this dreadful virus. Um, so when you're making that sort of transition from, you know, home and kind of, you know, as the lockdown um, restrictions have, have, have eased sort of venturing into other landscapes, other places, other terrains, in what way has that felt different um, under COVID-19? Or how have you felt about going, kind of venturing into these different areas? Um, I'm a big believer in looking back to the origins of, of words, because for me, a word is a metaphor. It's, um, it's, a, it's a vehicle to help our understanding of the world. Language itself is, is you know, and is, is amazing. It's, it's evolving constantly. Um, and, you know, at the same time, it's good to go back to the genesis of key terms of reference. Um, the word home is derived from the Indo-European word K, meaning a place to lay one's head, um, as Mallet said in 2004. Uh, and the Anglo-Saxon term ham, meaning estate. So it's a, it's an amalgamation of K and ham, which has been kind of morphed into meaning, meaning home. Um, and I think it's really nice, you know, where, where we lay our head, um, that's my home, um, which is a popular saying. Um, Maslow, just at the period of the Second World War, crafted a really interesting um, typology for what's called the basic hierarchy of, of needs. And according to, to Maslow, and I hope you can see my laser pointer, I'm just going to flash up the bottom layer of this, of this pyramid. Maslow identified five key levels of things that we need to experience or need to have to enable us to reach self-actualization this ambition at the top of the pyramid. But to get there, there are certain steps that we need to take or certain resources that we need to have access to, to enable us to have any chance of re realizing our full potential, what Maslow calls self-actualization. And at the very bottom, Maslow's put physiological needs, the basic needs of the body, food, water, warmth, rest, and shelter a roof over one's head because it, unless we have that we don't have anything you know we we um you know uh we don't have the ability to use that as a foundation from which we can grow and we can develop and um, so those very very basic needs are important and alongside that safety and security you know somewhere where we can feel um not threatened with violence not experiencing actual violence, somewhere where we can protect ourselves, we can, you know, um, sort of batten down the hatches inwards or we can defend ourselves outwards. But also there's a raft of psychological needs that we need, relationships with friends, and those lead to self-esteem or self-confidence, us being able to realize our self-capabilities. And when we're, when we're kind of building up to the self actualization, we see the iteration between these different layers. We see how important it is to have the basic um, access to shelter, 
to food and warmth and, and so on. And, and we, we begin to think about the affordability and accessibility of these different things. Um, housing affordability, um, uh, very challenging currently for the majority of the population. Um, and um, food poverty, again, prices are rising. So um, um, we have issues in terms of accessing fuel um, at an affordable level. So, um, so these, are the, these are the kinds of things that we need to think about. Um, and at every stage of this, we do need to have um, access to decent, affordable, hopefully, um, secure accommodation if we as people are able to realise our full potential. It's also worth pointing out that for many people, home represents a different um, place of being. It may be somewhere which is perilous. It may be somewhere where we feel threatened. It may be somewhere where we are experiencing routine violence. It may be somewhere where we're being exploited, you know, um, you know, to one extent or another. Um, so home is laden, home as place is laden with all these different attributes. And it's important for us to think about those as we, as we think about the importance of that in relation to place. Um, in geography, certainly home features, you know, um, very heavily. Um, and um, over the course of this module, in fact, we will be coming back to the theme of um, home. Um, I'm hoping that we'll have um, Lindsay McCarthy, who works at the Centre for Regional Economic and Social Research, coming in to join us um, to talk about her research on homelessness. Um, and also Jane Petrie will be covering the topic of home as well. So um, lots for us to think about. Um, but I love this, um, this quote from um, Bush that says, there are times when our homes express infinite possibilities when they reflect who we are and what we might be. So again, going back to Maslow's hierarchy, what we currently are, you know, as a snapshot, but what we can be when we're given those, um, those essential things to enable us to grow psychologically um, and enable us to make a positive contribution in the world. Um, some more definitions here of home, home as place. Um, so really um, nothing to do with bricks and mortar or the physicalities. Um, Peter Somerville's is I think very um, instructive. Uh, physically, psychologically and socially um, constructed, both real and ideal forms. So what we actually experience, but also what we imagine in our own minds. It might be when we think about our childhoods, we may, our memories may be more burnished, they may be more intensive, we may, we may not be able to remember everything that we experienced, um, but certainly there may be some things that we will never forget and that's equally important. Führer and Kaiser characterise home as an extension of the self and that's certainly very true. We think about, you know, even the, few, the mere physicalities of where we um, lay our belongings out, um, how we express ourselves and so on. Um, Benjamin's definition is a little more technical, a spatially localized, temporally defined physical frame and conceptual system for the ordering, transformation and interpretation of the physical and abstract aspects of daily domestic life. So that one is a little um, uh, loaded. So um, it might be an idea to go back and read that a few times. But I think, you know, he's basically saying that there's a, a that home offers us this system to interpret some aspects of our life which otherwise may or may not make sense. Um, addressing the meaning of home focuses attention on the relationship between this kind of more abstract um, socio-physical setting with our own, our own goals, our own ambitions, um, our values, our emotions, our morality, our personal philosophy. Um, so what we can, I think, clearly say overall is that home links to our environment both internally as ourselves but also externally and um, i really look forward to exploring these issues with you um, during the first seminar to see what your um, experiences have been of home under COVID-19. Um, Lindsay McCarthy who I mentioned earlier, Lindsay's definition of home um, is um, home is not simply a physical place where sleeping, eating and domestic labour occurs, 
but a complex space of emotion, an anchor for senses of nostalgia and comfort, a field for play night social relations, and a site for performing selfhood. I think that's a really, a really um, um, interesting and important definition of home as place. Home is in our language, of course, um, everywhere. You know, we don't have to look too far to see how the word home is casually dropped into everyday discourse. Um, I'm coming home. Um, I haven't been home for ages. These things that we say on a routine basis, I, I need to go home. Um, and certainly under COVID-19, the notion of, of home became really important for people. Um, um, so, and I've listed some sayings there, as you can see, an Englishman's home is his castle. There's no place like home. Home is where the heart is. Um, that's a really interesting one because that came from the fact, well, the earlier um, version of that saying, home is where the heart is, um, what it was originally um, written as in uh, um, Anglo-Saxon um, writing um, centuries ago was home is where the hearth is. So where everyone gathered together around the hearth. Um, and of course, that's something that we've lost over the years in many ways. Wherever I lay my hat, that's my home. And we mentioned that earlier. Home sweet home. Um, I want to just play this quick clip from The Wizard of Oz. Um, it's one of my favourite movies. Um, it's a movie that you will have heard of, I'm sure. I don't know if you've watched it recently, but, um, you know, it might be worthwhile just going back to it just to see um, how home itself is um, characterised. That's a nice, pleasurable piece of research to do, isn't it? And to help us along, um, I'll just get Dorothy talking about, about home, um, getting back to Kansas. I'm apologising in advance if there are some YouTube adverts that we need to negotiate. Your business idea needs a website, so go to Wix.com. What are you waiting for? Today's the day. 